Welcome to another video explaining the universe using the particle model. My name is Bob DeHilster and I am your particle model guru. Today's video is about my book. Part four of my book contains several papers, one of them titled The Three Main Objections. Gravity is Not Free is the title of my book. It spans a period from the early 1900s when David, my son, got started to the spring of 2015. And there are four parts to the book. I've covered part one, part two, part two in part. I'm not covering part three. And part four is a series of white papers, two of which I'm going to cover. And today's paper, uh, the three main objections, is the uh, a title of uh, this particular video. Well, Lesage theory of gravity is what is used by by me in in, in my gravity theory, and there is a. Uh, uh, a link, well, this is the link down here from a, a group called Chem Europe that states that the Lesage theory is conclusively discredited. And the article uh, at the beginning states the mechanical explanation for gravity, that is Lesage's explanation, never gained widespread acceptance although it continued to be studied occasionally by physicists until the beginning of the 20th century, which, by which time it was generally considered to be conclusively discredited. The report is an extensive discussion of Lesage's theory of gravitation, and, and it goes through a whole bunch of uh, scientists who at one time thought it was great, but then rejected it. Very well done. Yeah, unfortunately, it concludes that uh, it was discredited and, and fell out of favor, but uh, many people have still continued to follow it. In the book Pushing Gravity, I refer to this book many times, on page 70 is where I first found the idea that there were three main objections. The article I referenced has many more, but I'm covering only three. And it says in, on page 70, it's apparent that several closely interconnected problems frustrated the development of Lesage's theory, problems which have plagued Lesage-type models, like TPM, ever since. These relate to the thermodynamic question, which I uh, consider to be heat, and like fr frictional drag and gravitational aberration. So I'm going to cover heat, drag, and aberration. So why do I keep working on the particle model when it has these problems and more and has been conclusively rejected? Well, in my case, it seems to work. And I kept going because each time I tried it, it, it works. So let's talk about heat. Uh, early estimates of the speed of gravity went from instantaneous action at a distance, which is infinitely fast, to values like 10 to the 20th times times the speed of C, uh, although that's very fast, is considered finite. Uh, so speed is uh, one of the main questions here in, in, in uh, all three of the uh, problems here. <coughs> if Lesage corpuscles had mass along with the high speed and constantly hit the earth, uh, Henri Poincaré stated <coughs> the earth would incinerate in seconds. And he was a well-known scientist and uh, his opinion uh, held. And, but gravity has since been shown to have the same speed as light. Uh, and, and so he said, with that high speed and, and with some mass, it would the Earth would burn up. And yet, everyone later has had to accept the idea that gravity is finite, 
and and with with that, but even so, at high speed. So should it still burn up? The TPM answer. TPM states that the G1 speed is about the value of seed ha has mass, G2 mass, and I don't know the value because there's no standard, and is coming at the Earth from all the stars in the universe from all directions. Now, the first point is the one that they all miss. They, they think they got millions and millions of, of these particles hammering the Earth all the time. My work with the Lesage theory indicates that most of them pass straight through, so that no effect on the heat. But they just pass through. They're not hitting them. In order to heat something up, you've got to hit it and cause the atoms to vibrate more. For example, the number's not right, but let's assume 99% of them pass through and only 1% hit. So the problem is only a very fr a small fraction of what uh, Poincaré was pointing out. But a few of them do hit. That's the whole point. The 1% hit, but from all directions. Some will cause the atoms to vibrate faster because the, they hit them in, in, at the, in, while they're moving in the same direction. Therefore, the object will warm up when they hit and cause them to increase their vibration. It warms up. Some of, the some of them will cause the atoms to vibrate slower and cool down. Well, the net result, in my opinion, is that there is no heat gain. The object will not incinerate. In fact, the cool down is something that they don't even talk about. Be, uh, e even though it could have, in a sh small, short-term, it could have small, short-term increases or decreases in heat. In other words, over in a given interval of time, small interval of time, it actually could cool down, not heat up. It's something that they didn't delve into enough, just thought, said, well, they got masses of particles, moving at high speed, and it's just going to incinerate the Earth. Not going to, doesn't happen, and the particle model explains why it doesn't happen. Drag is the second one. The G1 particle field provides the sustaining forces that keeps an object moving in a straight line, but not at constant speed. It tends to slow down. That's what drag is, because the head-on collisions are greater than the rear end collisions and it tends to slow down. Most G1 particles pass through an object though and don't even hit. hit. Again, what's the extent of drag? It, if you think like Poincaré that all of them are slamming the thing head on and uh, there's even though there's less and less at the uh, pushing You'd think drag would be huge. The drag isn't huge because most of them pass through. Head-on collisions by the G1 particle will slow the object down, but only to the extent of the difference between the speed of the object and the speed of the G1. G1 is moving at speed C. Objects, objects move slowly, while G1 particles move at speed C and as a consequence, uh, the, uh, the drag is proportional to the difference between those speeds. Uh, the faster it tries to move, the greater the uh, head-on collisions. And, it, and this is one of the reasons why Einstein's idea that you can't move faster than C is probably valid. At least some objects can't move faster than C because the faster you go, the harder this uh, head-on force is and, and, this, and the more uh, it causes it to move slower. But uh, if, if the object ever got to speed C, there would be an infinite drag. It never gets there. 
And that's why we happen to see so many objects moving in space, moving at such a slow speed. Well, one, here's one of the examples of this pioneer of, of drag, possible drag, Pioneer spacecraft anomaly. Pioneer spacecraft 10 and 11 shot out in 1972 and 82, I believe, are slowing down with no explanation, at least until recently. Initially, neither Newton's equations nor relativity could give an answer. Some have suggested that a gas leak could be the cause, but it, that just conjecture that never gained acceptance, and it was listed as an anomaly. Well, I just found an uh, article in, uh, from the Discovery magazine in August 2018, and heat was suggested as a reason. Uh, the engines that were running it uh, were, uh, were suggested, and I didn't go into the details, but they, the article and the people writing it were very convinced that this was, a, uh, this was a plausible answer, and now the anomaly is satisfied. Uh, that article, is, at, is, is you can find it at this uh, link. Well, it turns out that uh, TPM's answer is the Lesage model is criticized because grab, drag is not observed in nature. Well, I could argue that the Pioneer spacecrafts are an example of drag. TPM suggests that drag could be the cause of the Pioneer slow, slowdown, will cause all objects to slow down, and supports Einstein's constant concept that nothing can move faster than light. You know, people ask, always ask the question, you know, what keeps it from moving faster? It's the G1 particle field keeps it from even getting close. We're talking about larger objects, not particles. G2 particle moves extremely fast, but it's not your normal object that you see through going through space. Aberration of gravity. Oh, okay, here's my one of my pet peeves, and I should have said it about anomaly. Whether the, you, Whenever I hear the word anomaly or aberration, I say, oh, okay, <laughs> they don't know. They're just using these things as an excuse because, first of all, nature does not aberrate. Light does not aberrate. This is one of the common terms used, the aberration of light. This was uh, found in 1825. Uh, James Bradley, I believe. This implies that nature, when you say na uh, light aberrates, it implies that light's doing something wrong. Yeah, but nature doesn't do wrong. That's not nature's nature. Nature does what nature does, and it's up to us to try to understand it rather than blaming light. In fact, we know what causes the so-called aberration of light, and yet the term still sticks. The problem here is that the speed of any particle must be finite. Initially, scientists felt that a particle moving at finite speed was too slow, even at speed c, because all their work assumed, for the whether they state it or not, that the speed of light and the speed of gravity were instantaneous. That was their thought. It was a shock for scientists to find out that light was going at speed c, and, and I don't know whether they've, uh, how they've directly dealt with that. Aberration. This is kind of a, a, an explanation of aberration. By the time the G1 particle gets here, from, as it comes through the sun to the earth, it has, or the earth has moved in orbit and has spun a number of degrees. The net force of gravity from the sun would be behind the center of gravity of the earth, and the earth would be pushed out of orbit. It's exactly what they were saying 
that this Lesage theory of gravity, or the TPM model I'm using, uh, cannot have the speed of gravity at C because the forces of gravity wouldn't line up the way they see it line up. Well, that's that's a little bit, uh, uh, it's not so easy of an answer. For And let me go back, I'm repeating myself. When the calculating the motion of the planets and the moons, it's much easier to assume that the speed of light and gravity are instantaneous. Where you see it, that's where it is. Where you see it, the effect of gravity on the Earth at that instant is there. The only way you, that can happen is if you assume they're both instantaneous. And then when you apply Newtonian math, it's quite simple. You, you got these two objects in space, you calculate the force between them, and, and, and you calculate the motion of the Earth due to the, uh, all, due to the speed and forces involved. It's an easy thing, way to do it. It is much more difficult to do the calculation when you assume that the speed of light and the speed of gravity are finite, namely both at speed C. Because now you gotta, you say, well, it's, it's leaving now, but the Earth is moving in, in the orbit and it's spinning. And by the time it gets here, uh, where is it? And, and, and uh, where's the gravity hitting? And, and uh, you know, it gets quite complicated. So this is simple up here. This is easy and to do, and I've done it that way myself, even though I know this is the way it's working. I haven't done this type of calculation, but it needs to be done, but it is difficult. Uh, and mainstream scientists need to prove it as well. If they're going to say, and they today they say the same thing, that gravity is speed C, light is speed C, they need to show why this assumption works by using the uh, calculations using it at speed C. The conclusion, the three objections can be a concern. And, and as I said, the article says there's, there's more, but I maintain that when fully analyzed, they are not strong enough to conclusively discredit neither the Lesage theory of gravity nor the particle model theory of gravity. My name is Bob DeHilster, and I am your particle model guru. Tune in next time when I will explain more of the universe using the particle model. Thank you for your attention.